For the first piece of collision detection code, what we'll do is we'll create the collision detection that will detect when the asteroids hit the spaceship and destroy the spaceship. So to do this, the best place to do it is to go into our code and go all the way down to the asteroids move function. Now this function is being called 65 times per second and it is attached to each asteroid. So as each asteroid moves around, this is the function that moves it. And this function can test whether there is a collision or a crossing of the X and Y path of the asteroid and the spaceship. And so that's what we'll do. And we'll do it basically with an if statement. So I'm in the asteroid move function. I'm going to go basically at, at the bottom here, right, just before the end of the function. And I'm going to say if. So we'll use an if statement to do this. And so this is the structure of the if statement right there, right? Um, but to do this, what I want to do is, is I want to write it out so that it's very easily, easily read. So I'm going to put this on another line here, and then another line. So I've separated the open parentheses and the closed parentheses onto separate lines. And in here, I'm going to write math dot absolute. Math dot absolute will take a positive or negative number and basically turn them into a positive number. And then we're going to subtract the asteroid's x position from the spaceship's x position on the screen. So we'll say this dot underscore x, which of course is the asteroid's x position, minus ship underscore mc dot underscore x. So we'll take the absolute value of the x position of the asteroid minus the ship's x position, and we want to see if it's less than or equal to, once we subtract these two, if it's less than or equal to, let's say, approximately 34 pixels, then that means they're close enough to each other. Now, how did I get the 34 pixels? I'm going to enclose this whole thing in parentheses. Well, the asteroid, if we take a look at it, is about, if we double click on it and go to information, it's about 60 pixels wide or 62 pixels tall. So on the x-axis, actually, if we cross the positions of the two, in other words, we want the distance here, about half of it. And let's see here, minus the other position, uh, I'd say about, yeah, about 34 is about good, maybe 35, because you have to take into account also the half of the width of the, uh, of the spaceship as well. And the spaceship is only about wide, about 25 pixels wide, 21 tall. So that should work out fine. So back in the code, we have this, and then afterwards I'll put a double AND sign, logical AND, because we also want to compare this and make sure it's less than 34, but also on the y-axis too. So I'll copy that and paste that, and we'll say math.absolute underscore y, and the ship's y position, and we'll also just use 34 as a drop-in value. We can always increase this or decrease this if necessary. And then now in between, this is where, so if this is true and the asteroid and the ship have are close to each other, only 34 pixels apart on the x-axis and only 34 pixels apart on the y-axis, then we probably have a hit. So what we can do is we can inside here trace the string hit and just see if it works. So now we play our movie and we see here comes the asteroid and we should see and you can see there it is. We've got some hits showing up in the window. And notice how we don't get any hits just until we've crossed the path. So that was good. If you look closely, we didn't see any hits being traced to the output window until we actually crossed the path of the asteroid. So now, instead of trace hit, what we'll do is we'll say 
another if statement in here. And I'll just tab it over so that we know it's inset. If not ship dead, if not ship dead is true. So in other words, if ship dead equals false. If I say if not ship dead, that's the same thing as saying if ship dead equal equals false. There's two ways to do it. I could say if the ship dead variable equals false, meaning we have a, a ship that's running. Remember in our init function, we set a variable called ship dead equal to false to start our game. So in here we'll say if ship dead equal equals false or just if not ship dead then destroy ship. We'll call a function called destroy ship. After we've called the function destroy ship, which we'll have to write, we haven't written this function yet, we'll set ship dead equal to true. So destroy ship will only get called once because as soon as the destroy ship function is called, we then set the variable back to true, or we set the variable to true, and now this will no longer be a true scenario. If not ship dead will not be the case. It'll be false because it's now equal to true. So this will only execute once. So now we need to write our destroy ship function. So let's do that. So basically, right after this asteroid move function, at the bottom of all of our code, we'll put function destroy ship. And then inside of this function, the first thing we'll do is we'll set rotate equal to 0. We'll set thrust equal to 0. We'll take our ship underscore MC, our spaceship, and go to and play our destruction sequence, which is on keyframe 5. It starts on keyframe 5 of the ship underscore MC movie clip. So we say ship underscore MC, go to and play keyframe 5. Then we can take our lives variable and minus minus to minus one. Since we just had the spaceship destroyed, we just lost one of our lives. And then we can take our MC lives movie clip that's on the stage and go to and stop on whatever lives is equal to. So if lives is equal to two now, we went from three now down to two, then it'll jump to keyframe two and we should see 2. So let's see if this works now. So we'll hit Control Enter. There's our ship. Asteroid hits us, and we did not get a collision. Now, we should have seen a collision, and in fact, we actually did. Now, I can't move the ship, so something did happen, but we should have seen this spaceship explode. You can see that our lives went down to 2, so that decremented. So there's a problem in our code somewhere. So I'll close this and I'll open up my action script code and you can see right away that in the function destroy ship I put ship underscore mc dot go t and play this should be highlighted blue and it's not so if I put an O in there you can see now it's working and now if I hit control enter there's the ship and you can see it just exploded and now it's gone also our lives went down to two we can see it one more time hit control enter I have three lives I fly around, oh, we just lost a life, ship exploded, and now we have to figure how do we bring the ship back once we've lost a life? How do we then respawn or reinitialize our spaceship? 